I want to look at something very important. Something very important. Because we're looking at this idea of God creating this world before he created man. The trees, the grass, the vegetables, the herbs, all these things existed before man was given the breath of life. Before he became a living soul, God made provision for all these things. Just as a loving father would, he made provision in case his children would need something. He made provision for them. But when we look at this, because of sin, these vegetables, even these fruit, are going to be affected. These very things that God said to eat, and these things, by eating them, they would give life, even life more abundant, as Christ gives us life, because Christ is the author of these things. These things also be affected by sin, and the world is affected by sin. I'd like to look at some text here to show a principle of how and why we talk about the gospel of health, even the healing art, even the idea of using nutrition and herbs and all the various principles, even water, therapeutically as a method of healing, why God has given us clear light on how to do it, how to use it. Let's look at some text. In the book of Genesis, again, we're going to the book of Genesis. Look at this creation story. Look at the book of Genesis. And we're looking for the book of Genesis, chapter 4. Genesis 4 beginning with verse 10. Genesis 4 and verse 10. God said, eat of this herb of the field. Eat of these vegetables. Take herbs. These things are going to provide food for you, Psalms 104. And also they're going to provide a service to you. They're going to minister these elements even in a more concentrated form than you find even in fruits and vegetables. These vegetables, the, the network of these vegetables are more dense than some of your fruit. They're going to have get more fiber. And also they're going to provide even more interesting combinations of elements and enzymes than you find in fruit. They're going to be therapeutic to you, like the green herb with that chlorophyll, that green color that's in your plants, that actually trap the power of the sun and convert it into medicine, even blood-building medicine. You ever heard of chlorophyll? They use it in Korea. They use it in World War II. They use it in Vietnam. They use chlorophyll in place of blood plasma many times because the chlorophyll, when you look at the chlorophyll molecularly, the molecular structure of chlorophyll and the non-protein fraction of the blood, the heme and the hemoglobin, the heme and the plasma are almost identical when you look at them molecularly. When you go home and look at it, the nucleus of your green plants is magnesium. The nucleus of blood is iron. Outside of that nucleus, it looks exactly the same. And they've used it even to build up people's blood when blood supplies was low. As a matter of fact, Jehovah's Witnesses that are very, very strict with the idea of using blood, they have been very, very prominent in science trying to promote the use of chlorophyll in place of blood. It has been used in wartime. It's been used in various different extremities of cases when people that were low in blood. But if chlorophyll can do that in these extreme cases, what if we ate more green plants and we're putting that in our body continually. Would it great good blood? Yes. Would it be medicinal? Because sin was a blood problem. Sin was a blood problem. If sin wasn't a blood problem, then Jesus wouldn't have to shed his. And because of that, God gave man, even in the principles of nutrition, a blood transfusion, if you will, through diet, to build his body because the wages of sin is death. And because of the effects of sin in the air, in the earth, in the, in the mind, God wanted to give even a, a, a more powerful element of nutrition to aid man in his infirmities. Aid him. But look at this in Genesis chapter 4 here. Genesis 4. In Genesis 4, we see the story of Cain and Abel. Remember that story? What did Cain do to Abel? Cable, Cain killed Abel, right? It was the first murder. And in Genesis 4, notice what God said happened to the earth because of sin. Now we know because of sin, man had to eat the herb of the field. Medicinally, this is a wonderful thing. But it was a humbling thing. Man had to bend down and pick these things up. Where he never had to bend down to eat his food, now he had to humble himself to eat these things. He had to till the soil. It was more difficult to open the soil because of sin. He had to eat from the earth as well as from the tree. But now in this first murder, look at Genesis 4. In Genesis 4 it says this. Beginning with verse 10. Genesis 4.10 says, And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now thou art cursed from the earth, 
which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not what? It shall not henceforth do what? Yield its strength unto thee. Now some people look at this text and say, well, man, I guess back in those days they had really great crops. It's greater than that. Yes, there was a greater yield, and even though it was more challenging than in the Edenic days, to have to open the soil and plant and so on, because Adam was a farmer. Even though it was more difficult after sin because of this idea of the earth receiving blood or because of sin, because of murder, and this idea of the water of, of blood watering the earth, God said the earth will not yield its strength unto thee. It's greater than the amount of crops you receive, but even the fruits and vegetables would not yield and give to man easily its strength. Now the Bible says that we're to eat for strength and not for drunkenness. But the Bible just told us that this strength that we're supposed to eat for, they're not going to yield it to you now. Why? Because of one murder. Because of how many murders? One murder. Now how many murders have we had since then? And when we talk about the need of receiving this strength, we need the strength that comes from these foods because these foods are not only maintaining our health, but they're restoring our health, they are even warding off sickness. There's a tremendous strength in fruits and vegetables, but the Bible says these things will not easily yield its strength. Now before we get, we get almost panicking, there's tremendous strength still in fruits and vegetables. Can you imagine if, if you can take garlic, and they have taken garlic and killed practically every disease known to man in this laboratory, science will tell you, Google it. They killed practically every disease known to man in a petri dish with garlic. Every one. Now, does that mean that you have to take gallons of garlic? And doesn't mean that. However, garlic is a potent disease killer. While it won't affect the living tissue, while it's very, very promoting of health to the tissues, very, very healing, boosting the immune system, it is a killer to viruses and disease and so on. Yet, this thing called garlic that can kill all these diseases is not yielding its full strength to you. The Bible teaches you that. You have things called um, antioxidants in food. They're finding in strawberry and, and blueberries and, and pomegranate. They're looking at what they call superfoods. You ever heard of superfoods? Avocado, superfoods. And they say these things have tremendous antioxidant properties, and these antioxidants actually maintain these tissues in the body and keep them from going old, keep wrinkles from coming on, keep the body from breaking down. These foods, many of them, most of them found in the Bible. That's another sermon later on. These foods are tremendous, potent healing properties. Science says, we've seen in the Bible, science says that, but the Bible told us that these things generally would not Yield strength. Yield strength. Now, if that is true, do we need that strength? Do we need that strength if we are sick? Let me ask you a question. When we talk about these, these fruit and vegetables and things that grow from the earth that God says are for our meat, they, we must eat the herb of the field. They are going to provide food for you, and they're going to provide a ministry to you. They're going to provide healing to you. We need the strength that's in there, and if you're sick, if you're uh, under some type of ailment, you need not only a good diet, you need not only a biblical diet, even getting back to this diet, but you need as much strength in the blood as you can get because you need as much air and pure water and nutrients you can get to cause that healing to spring forth speedily. That's why when we look at Genesis chapter 4, and seeing this idea of disease, I'm oh, sorry, not disease, this idea of death coming in to the earth and causing the earth not to yield its strength. Then you see the flood, and when the flood happened, there was great violence everywhere in the earth, and God not only had this idea of the earth not yielding its strength, but now the entire earth was deluged with water, and now the earth is now cursed again because of the flood. Do so you see the original sin? You see Cain's sin, you see the flood, and you've seen even great violence in our day. Can we see even in the animal creation, in the herbs and so on that are growing, that God is showing that these things are lacking in strength? But brothers and sisters, there's a way that we can get the strength from it. 
when we understand that these things will not yield the strength readily, there's a way that we can receive the strength from it. For instance, do you know that the term antioxidants, very popular term now in science, antioxidants, some of those powerful antioxidants are multiplied or only will come out of the fruit or the vegetable or the bulb or the garlic when you do something to it. Someone said it. But, but you have to do something. In other words, you have to cause, because it will not yield the strength to it, to you, you have to cause the strength to be yielded out. Let me ask you a question. How does God bring strength out when something is, you know, when, if you won't yield, that means that you are resisting, you're in rebellion. The earth is going to be in rebellion against man now because he's not going to yield his strength. How did God bring strength out of the old world? When the old world was in rebellion, in the time of Noah, God brought out some righteous people out of the earth and he removed the rebellion. What did he do? He used something called water. He used water to remove the wickedness and to bring the strength out. And you're going to find that when we talk about natural remedies, even using natural remedies, we can find a divine origin for the philosophy of using even herbs or vegetables and creating more or bringing more strength out of them by putting them in water, even hot water. It's called tea. What does tea do? Same thing that God did in the flood. Washed away the bad and brought the strength, the strongest one, the pure, the most holy ones, out to start the world over by using water. Sodom and Gomorrah. Same thing. Solomon and Gomorrah is a type of the end of the world. What did God use to wash away that was evil or to move? And fire. 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 Heat, right? Fire. And through fire, we also can cause these things to bring its strength out. Hot water. Cooking. These, do you know that one of those powerful antioxidants is found in tomato? One of the powerful. And tomato, if you eat the tomato, it does not readily yield its strength unto you. But when you heat and make tomato sauce, you get all the healing power. The antioxidant power is tenfold greater in tomato paste than in the raw tomato. Greens. Anyone ever had collard greens or mustard greens, those things? You love those things, don't you? But ever ate them raw? Now, some people eat them raw. Now, if you want to eat them raw, hey, that's, that's on you. But do you know that the, the, the cancer-fighting properties that are in these green plants are exponentially higher when you cook them? Why? The Bible shows you the principle. It will not yield a strength. You have to actually cook some of these things. There's a balance between cooking, eating the fresh produce, and also using some of the cooked produce. There's a balance. The Bible teaches a balance because in Genesis, they were eating the fruit of the trees, right? And even eating these vegetables. But now, there's a need of bringing the strength out. And there's a need of balance of eating those things that are going to be cooked properly. We don't want to destroy. We want to bring the strength out. And also those things that are fresh, like salads. We see our understanding here. Even when we're talking about herbs, we use hot water to bring teas out. And even, let's look at the text here. Let's look, look at this text. Look at the book of Job, uh, sorry, Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah, the 50, 53rd chapter, I believe. Isaiah. Isaiah 53. Water, fire, and notice this, Isaiah 53. Look at the life of Christ. In Isaiah 53, we see a prophecy of Jesus. How was the life that was in Jesus brought out that man may live? How was the strength that was in Jesus? How was the righteous? How was the glory of God seen in Jesus? It says in Isaiah 53 this. Isaiah 53. I want you to notice that Jesus is likened unto a tender plant. Like unto a tender plant. But notice how it says, even as it likens unto a tender plant, how this righteousness, how this strength was brought out of him. Isaiah 53 and verse 1, it says, Who hath believed thy report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should you know how people don't like vegetables? Or they say, what, you know, herbs? Oh, I don't, no, I don't, I don't want that. I don't, give me a pill, give me some, no, I don't want that. There's no desire for that. Jesus is likened unto a tender herb, a tender plant. Verse 3, 
He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him, and he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him, what? Stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are how was the healing, strengthening, salvation power of Christ brought out? Wounded, bruising, stripes through his blood. That's why when you use garlic, is garlic very potent? Does garlic have the healing strength in it? Yes. But if you really want to get the strength out of garlic, you have to take that garlic and you have to bruise it. You crush it. Crush that, that little bubble garlic, crush it, and you leave it. And as you leave it, now that it's crushed, the healing principles come out. The allicin now starts to leak out of the fiber as before it wouldn't leak out. Now, you can cut it up. People take it and they chop it up. And by chopping it up, yes, it starts to bleed. It starts to bring things out. But do you know that if you crush it and leave it, it starts to bleed out the allicin to a greater degree than if you just take it and chop it and you put it in some water? If you take it and you, you break it, you just crush it, wound it, bruise it. What? Didn't Jesus make garlic? The same principles that are in Christ's life and his ministry are the same principles why, why, why these things are working. The same principles we find in natural remedies, we find in the author of natural remedies, the author of these things, Jesus. By wounding, by bruising, by, 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 stri by cutting these things open, these things promote strength. Juicing. You ever heard of juicing before? You break up the fiber. You cause it to bleed. You bring the, the blood out of the carrot. You bring the blood out of the apple. You bring the blood, the, the, the living juices out of these things. And by partaking of these things, we bring the life force into us in a greater way. As a matter of fact, when we talk about even this idea of the beginning of this gospel of health being Genesis 129 and God saying, could go to this tree. Do you know what it says in the book of Acts? Look at Acts 10 as we close. Acts 10 chapter. Acts, what chapter are we looking for? Yeah. Acts 10. Look at the book of Acts 10. Acts 10, as we start and lay this foundation tonight, we want to go point by point by point through the principle of the gospel of heaven. See, all these principles are found in the story of creation and show us how and why natural remedies work, how to apply them. We don't have to wonder how to use natural remedies or how to best use them. We can see it in creation. We can see it in the story of redemption. And by seeing that, we have a firm foundation for our feet. Acts 10, Acts 10 and verse 38 says this. Acts 10, verse 38 and verse 39. Notice what it says here about Jesus. Because Jesus told us to go and eat of the tree. Eat of the tree. And this physical truth also had a deep spiritual truth. Because this man, God converted him from death to life. From death to life. And before this man was converted, this tree existed. But as soon as he had life in him, God immediately pointed him to the tree and said that I have given you life, but now you must go to this tree continually to receive your life. Yes, this tree existed before you came to life, but I'm telling you to go to this tree and get life from this tree day by day, morning and evening. Get your strength from this tree. Notice Acts 10 and verse 38. Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Verse 39. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Where was Jesus hanged? Tree. Jesus was hanged on a tree. And just as we see this fruit hang on a tree, Jesus says, I was also hanged on a tree. In the book of Genesis, when God says that this converted man must be continually going to the tree to eat, morning and evening, he was to eat from this tree. His life was to be the same thing in the plan of salvation. The tree in the garden, the trees are a symbol of going to the cross, of eating of the Son of Man. Didn't Jesus say, you must eat of me day by day? He said, I am that bread, I am that food. All these symbols are taking us back to our life is in Christ. The life the man received here was from Christ. 
And by pointing to the tree, again, he was pointing to a symbol of himself. Because Christ is the fruit of Calvary. Is he not? In Genesis 3, when God prophesied that Christ would come, Christ calls him the seed of the woman. What kind of fruit were men supposed to eat in the book of Genesis? It was only the fruit that had seed in itself that could create trees. Jesus is that seed that created Calvary, a way of giving us life and strength and reproducing this in others. Because when you eat this, it's reproducing that life. This, these seeds are principles of reproduction by which you can get another tree and another tree, other churches, other Christians. It is reproductive. And this is the principle of God's life. That we may have life and life more abundantly today. People may be hearing this with diabetes and high blood pressure and so on, and various different ailments, but this is showing in the book of Genesis not only a, a history of creation, it's showing the origin of true healing. Tr the truth of the healing art that God put in the earth that has no, no alternative nature. You know what alternative medicine? People say, oh, are you into alternative medicine? I say, no. But don't you believe in herbs and natural eating and diet and so on and so forth? That's, that's alternative medicine. I said, well, some people that are in alternative medicine follow that. But our system, the biblical system, is the native method. It's the original. It's not alternative. It's not other than the original. It is the native method. It started before the world began. As a matter of fact, let's close here in the book of Revelation. It started before the world began because God ordained that there would be healing that healing was available before there was ever sin, before there was ever sorrow. God ordained or laid the foundation or the origin, divine origin of the gospel of hell. Look at it says in Revelation 13. Revelation 13, beginning with verse 8. Revelation 13 and verse 8. Brothers and sisters, God has given us fruits, nuts, grains, and seeds, these various herbs that have a healing property to them. And also with even the, the strength that comes with being in the sunlight and the air and getting pure water. All these are principles. We're going to talk about in a greater relief more and more on tomorrow and the other days, looking at how God has given us all these healing properties. I return to Revelation 13. Can I give you a text? Go to the book of Job. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to give you this text. It's Job chapter 36. Job 36, verse 27 and 28. Write that in your notes. Job 36, 27 and 28. In the beginning, God gave the earth all this grass and all these trees. And how was it watered? The Bible says a mist came up, a vapor came up, and watered all the face of the earth. After sin, after the flood, where did all that vapor that was coming out of the earth go? Into the sky. And now we have clouds. What's water vapor? When water vapor falls upon trees or leaves and so on, it's called dew. And that water vapor is a distilled water. Because it turns to a gas, it distills, it leaves the elements, it leaves the dead earthliness down, and the pure water comes up. That's why God likes the Holy Spirit and the latter rain to do because it has no earthliness in it. It has no, no, no self in it. It has no humanity in it. It's a pure message. It has none of our ideas or theories in it. It is a pure message. It is the dew that lays upon the morning. And when God created this idea of cleansing the world in the time of Noah and used the water to do it, this dew rose up in the form of clouds and Job 36, I believe, 36, 28 and 27, or 27, 28, it says that that water is distilled water, and God distills it upon man abundantly. Do you know that all the principles of cleansing water are found in nature? Because when that sun comes down and the sun hits the earth, and that water hit, it gets hit with that heat, it becomes gaseous and now rises up into the clouds. And as it rises up into the clouds, it gets hit with uh, ozone up there, you ever heard of ozonization? It gets hit with light, and even light is a way of cleansing water. When the air hits and it breaks into a cloud and it comes down by rain, it distills down pure water. Now, of course, if you're in the city, it comes through fog and smog, but pure water comes down, then it falls down through various elements and sediments, which is called microfiltration. Ever heard that before? 
microfiltration, it goes through all this type of sediment, microfiltration, then it comes and it hits this root, and now it is sucked up reverse into the tree through this root system, which is a membrane, which is called reverse osmosis. It comes up through that, and now when you have apples and oranges and peaches and plums, you have the water in there has been purified seven times. You kind of all the different processes is purified water. That's why you see all these waters with reverse osmosis and distilled and ozone, because these are the methods that God uses to purify. This fruit was the pure water, water that's the, the distilled water, the dew, like the latter rain, that man ate this fruit and had life in him. That's another story. That's another story. We don't, we don't have time for that. Revelation 13, let's close here. The gospel of hell. Revelation 13 and verse 8 says that this healing work existed way before man was even created from the foundation of the world. Revelation 13 and verse 8 says this, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, meaning the beast power of the last days, shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Jesus. Jesus the Lamb slain from the foundation. foundation of the world. So was Jesus slain? Or was Jesus sacrificed, thought up at Calvary? Before that, before at the foundation of the world, Christ pledged himself to walk that road to Calvary. He pledged himself, if man should sin, I will go and pay his penalty with my blood. I've given him all these things that he may even have probationary time, that by eating right and by having these healing principles, that he may extend his life, that he may choose me before it's forever too late. I, from the foundation of the world, pledged my life and gave my blood. I pledged it by my word, and I brought it to pass. And if Jesus did all this for us in creation, put all these healing medicines, most of the medicines you see today that are being used are being found in rainforests in various parts of the world, They're using these herbs mixed with poisons as medicines to try and heal the body. God's put these things in the earth. The loving creator has done this. If he did that, even after sin, to give us more time so we won't die prematurely in our sins, and give us more time to think upon him and understand his cross, if Jesus came after making that pledge and even died upon the cross for us, will he not finish the plan of salvation? Will he not save you? And I? Will he do all that, expend all that, then come and die for you and to suffer and die? Not just die, but suffer and die. And will he not complete the plan of salvation? Won't he do the things he's promised to do in the future? And won't he do the things he's promised to do in your life? You might be struggling with something tonight. You might feel that you cannot break free from addiction. You may have thoughts of, of the confusion, depression, but brothers and sisters, God is able to break through the cross and through the healing principles of the gospel. He's able to break all these things. In Matthew 1, 21, last text, Matthew 21, 21, it says, and they shall call his name Jesus. What does Jesus mean? For he shall save his people from, not in, from their sins, from their depression, from their addictions, from their, their, their problems, their, 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 their guilt, their stress, from their diseases, from their ailments. Can you believe on Jesus tonight? Amen. Pray with me tonight. Heavenly Father, the divine origins of the gospel of hell, we need to understand the principles by which God is trying to open our minds to the realities of his physical work, his physical work, in providing things in the earth, leaving medicines in the earth that we, even though we are cursed with sin and the effects of sin and the ailments and the disease, even the dying, that you've placed these things that we may have life. We may be restored. We may be able to understand these things and help others to have more probationary time, more time to live and to serve and know about Jesus, to remove suffering, both ourselves and in others. And Lord, you pray, you are even interceding right now that we would look upon the cross, just like Adam was raised from his death and caused to look to the tree and to go daily to eat of it. You desire us to do the same thing personally and lead others to this. Help us to this understanding tonight, dear God. Help us to see the love of God and turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full into his wonderful face that the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of of his glory and grace. For we ask it all with the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.